get my degree in special education. My job was at Stonebelt Center in the early 70s. And at that time, Stonebelt Center was a, a facility in the location it is right now, which was all the services occurred. Children and adults went to that center. So from one end of the building to the other end of the building, children, preschoolers, and adults with disabilities were served in that facility. No children were really served in a community setting, in a public school, especially children with moderate to severe disabilities. They were all at Stonebelt. When I started, they were really coordinating, starting to coordinate with the public schools. So there were teachers in that building that were employed by the public schools, and that was in the early 70s. Mm -hmm. So they were contracted public school teachers, and the, the building administrator, Joan Burton, was part of her salary was reimbursed by the public schools as a principal. Um, so they, we operated on the school calendar. So if there was, like over the winter break or spring break, there were, there were no classes. Um, but administratively, Stonebelt um, had the resources, the funding, to run summer programs within that building, which was another concern for families, what, was gonna, what would happen to their kids in the summer when school was out. So they primarily did have programs that ran year-round. The special ed law came about, I believe, in 1975. The individual uh, idea stands for Individuals with Disabilities Education Act. And that meant that all kids with disabilities had the right to be in public school and their education would be paid for, uh, their transportation would be paid for. And so before that, a lot of kids weren't going to school or they were in a very segregated um, day care type facility. So, so it meant that, you know, they were with other kids and had the right to be there and had the right to an education. A primary push came from families, working with the state, working with the local special education director, um, because they truly wanted their kids to have the same opportunities. They, the families really wanted their children to go to school with their siblings. They wanted their, their kids to go to school with other people in the neighborhood. Um, it was just incredibly, and still is, it's just what, what most families want. And I would say one of the concerns that um, some families had and a lot of teachers had and a lot of um, other people involved in providing services, especially to kids with moderate and severe disabilities, would be, can public schools really do this? Is this really good for kids? Are they going to be, are they going to be marginalized? Are they going to be singled out? Are they really going to get the support they need? And another concern was that it, it would lose the network that a lot of families had, because then kids and families are kind of scattered all over the community instead of localized or all grouped together in one facility like Stonebelt, it was an automatic network for families. They, they would see each other when they dropped their kids off. They went to the same school events. The preschool, that gave me uh, a set of parents that I knew who I could, you know, we could talk about the problems we were having with kids with disabilities. <clears throat> and there were only about, I would say, 11 children in that little preschool class. But to this day, I think we, some of us, have stayed in touch to some degree and, you know, we kind of formed a support group for each other. When Jennifer was about five, the preschool that she had gone to closed and uh, there was a preschool program at Stonebelt and Stonebelt was the um, agency that served school-age children at that time. Uh, the law idea had come about and so the kids who had more significant disabilities, moderate and significant disabilities, went to Stonebelt. However, um, 
parents started, you know, wanting their kids in the public schools. And I believe the first uh, class to move out of Stonebelt was at, at North High School. And then gradually they moved classes out. So Jennifer was at Stonebelt till she was about 10 years old. I think that, you know, teachers had a perspective and, and families had a perspective too. They believed and wanted their kids in a gen ed class. It was such a big deal at the time. And it gave, it gave all of us that really believed in doing that, it, it gave us a little more authority, if you will, that we had the backing of the law and we didn't have to hide around being afraid what would happen with kids. We were asking teachers to do some things they had not done before, to interact and support and teach kids that they didn't have a lot of experience doing in the past. And there certainly was some anxiety. There was some worry that they didn't have that magic dust that special ed teachers did. Um, I, I feel very strongly that it's, it's, it is a process. It's not something that's gonna happen overnight and we cannot just place kids in this great classroom and they're going to learn by osmosis. If we just put them in there with you know, 15, 20 other kids that do not have any disability, that this particular student is going to just learn by being there. And I, I think it was and still continues to be a huge challenge. Um, training teachers, giving teachers what they need, giving the support that teachers need, and helping teachers, helping general education and special education teachers identify what they really, really need to help a student be academically and socially successful. I also know that parents really struggle. I, I don't have a lot of contact with younger parents right now, but I do know that a few that I have talked to, um, they're still concerned about the supports the teachers get when their kids are in regular classrooms and um, just really knowing how to work with the school so that their kids are getting the, the most out of school and being integrated. Uh, as much as possible. But I definitely feel that kids flourished and one of the fears or worries that a lot of us had is that, hmm, can anybody do it as well as we can? Mm -hmm. um, they, you know, people out there that don't know kids with disabilities, are they going to be treated well? Um, and I have to say in all my years experience that, that they are, I mean, Good teachers, good principals, good administrators are good for all kids. Mm -hmm.